Hey guys, welcome back to the Revelation series presented by Revelation Machinery. This is the last stop of the Revelation series recaps for this season. This event was the Toyota Series Championship held on Lake Gunnersville. I qualified for this championship by finishing 22nd in the points in the Plains Division. I uh, got to go to this event in November. This was a fall tournament, generally going to be a pretty tough tournament. A lot of times on Gunnersville, it's a grass upriver deal. And went into this event expecting to be kind of out of my element. Was going to go and just put my head down and grind, doing what I like to do, fishing offshore looking for the ledge bite, looking for a brush bite, trying to piece together. Um, really the goal is to piece together maybe 15, 16 pounds a day to try and make day three. There was a major curveball thrown at the end of practice. I got on a suspending bite, got on some fish that were schooling, and that gave me the opportunity to do something really crazy in this event. I had a bit of a lackluster day one, but made a big adjustment on day two, and you'll see that from day two to day three and the end of this event, I was able to move from 63rd to 9th to 3rd by the last day of this tournament and really change the entire scope of my season. And the Toyota Series Championship is the crown jewel of the Toyota Series. It's, it's what we try to qualify for all year long. It's a $450,000 total purse, so a gigantic payout event. Um, one of the highest payout events in the entire sport. And this is the kind of event that gives you the ability to jumpstart a career. And I was blessed enough to have a great event and which led me to being on the Tackle Warehouse Invitationals this year. And Cole's got one. Me and Cole are out here fishing a local oh, lake. No. Oh no, Cole's got a stick. That sucks. Oh man, stick bass. Um, <laughs> so I was really able to capitalize on this event and do something special. Uh, day one starts here in just a second. I hope you guys really enjoy it. I have yet to capture Paul. 330. That's our final He's a spotted bass, ain't he?
single spotted bag. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it to football. Oh my god. I thought it was a brown one. It's like surely that ain't a spotted bass. Alright. I'll take. I'll take him. Let me double check. He's got a oh, No doubt. 16 inch. We're on the board. Let's get the ball rolling. Gladly Nico rig my way around today for a five of them. Yeah, ideally four of them and a four pounder, but what high two? Oh yeah. Big. Big spotted bass I've got outside table rod. I've seen a big, but not this one. I'm surprised he bit because the cast before I stuck one of his friends. Yeah. For all of like a stack size. Like yeah. And I dropped down there and he followed it up. I'm like, crap, he's not gonna bite it. And I let it fall to the bottom and it just went. And I was like, whoop. Heck yeah. Let's get it started in here. I'll Nico rig my way around all day if I have to. Granted. My guess is around 11 o'clock that shad's gonna get up. And when it gets up, do what? When it gets up, you have to be there because it's, as soon as the bait gets above about six feet in the water column, they start killing it. I don't know if it's that like, whenever they chase it, when it's on the bottom, occasionally when you see them chase shad on the bottom, the shad move like, thread fin move like gizzards like they move laterally this way when bait gets up they don't move the school just breaks apart whenever a bass chases them but the school stays stationary so they're just a, they're sitting up like our lakes will freeze for like three weeks three four weeks not long but they don't get thick enough to ice fish like rarely ever like once every three or four years, it'll be thick enough for maybe a week. Got one. Keep it. Sorry, sir. Fine. All right. What did you say? <laughs> Flying spotted bass. We got spotted bass. About a 15 inch. He's getting a cold tag though. Good. This one's getting a cold tag. <laughs> that is a good spot. Holy frick. I'm working on a mega bag of Gbo spot. That is a that's that's an almost three pound spot. I don't know. All right, then. Stuff on that. Yep. That is a three pound spot. Look at this thing. Oh my god. Working on a mega bag of G Bill spots. Oh, okay. Not a mega bag of on G Bill, but a mega bag of G Bill spots. Nice. Honestly, if I have five of them, I probably won't be that mad. That's darn near 15 pounds. Five. 
Got one that needs gone. Bad. If it's four pounder to replace that one, and I won't have a bad day. And there's out, they're out here, dude. Because I know I had one of them on just a minute ago. Oh, I lost the little one and I got the good one. Did you see that? I had a 14 incher on and he took it out of his mouth. I didn't even turn around. You're good. That, that worked out as good as it could have been expected. I had a 14 incher and I saw how many were with it so I slowed it down and you see the crap. Thank you, sir. That's a one and a half pound call. Because if I weighed in 10 and a half today, I'm out of it tomorrow no matter how big of a bag I get. But if I weigh in 12 and a half, I'm in it regardless. I looked down, I saw two. Yeah, then I saw one. Look at this. That's a coal. <laughs> Mount Carmel, Illinois Plains Division Pro. The name of the game is five. You did your job. Bringing a limited bass to the scales here on day one. To jump up in that top 10, you only need about 14 and a half pounds. He's got five on the scales coming in at 13 pounds and six ounces. You're in the game. Sitting inside the top 20 here on day one. Lebanon, Missouri, a limited bass on the pro side. Punched his ticket through the Plains Division. You got five to the scales on day one to the tune of 17 pounds and eight ounces. You're sitting in 10th place, and that's a fantastic start to day one. So on day one, I really had a disappointing day. Thought I was gonna catch a lot more weight than I did and didn't make very good adjustments. I kind of went ride or die on the schooling bite, on the suspending bite, but I was chasing fish relating to bait. And this was my downfall on day one and really was the day, you know, you can't win tournaments on Gunnersville and Florida on big fish fisheries on day one, but you sure can lose them. And that's what I did in this event. On day one, put myself too far behind the eight ball to come back and win it but I set myself up to make a major comeback on day two. Uh, not very good, I had 13 and a half pounds. So, I'm lunch money hunting today, I'm out of it fish day three.
This is a giant. <laughs> I caught a 42 pound blue cat practicing this on an airy. On the cock. On the plate. Yeah. Hey, right. that's pretty better. Not a bad one. Two and a third. Two shot two and a half. Got him. Got him. Got him. for you. You're good. When they come hot on a big hook like that, I just prefer to boat flip them. I told you he's good, good. Couple of these out here. I'm gonna get right. You hear him talk about anything about being able to put something on your line? Got, Got it? That's a good one. That'll cool. Mm -hmm. Now it's gonna be really hard to tell which is my smallest because I got three or four of these. You probably what? Two and a half? Yeah. Oh. Honestly, probably closer to 15 pounds than I think. Yeah, Here we go, that's my best one now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's three and a half pounder. Heck yeah. Pretty decent right there. Yeah. 
Got it. <laughs> Told you it was pretty decent. That's, oh my gosh, dude. Oh, don't shake again, fish. He put the hook in my hand. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. We're putting on a little, a little clean. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'll help you though, bro. He's definitely gonna help me. That's a three and a half pounder. You think so? Yeah. All way. Well, uh, he's got a little bit of gut now, but he's like, yeah, I couldn't see it yet. That's my second best fish. Dude. Yep, that's my biggest fish. I decided to put them up, put it on them right quick. That's a blanket hybrid, man. No touch plank, man. We'll go to Dale. I don't think he will. I didn't even see him bite it. He was all over it so fast. I didn't even get caught up to him before I felt the thump. It's just a squander, dude. Uh, that's that's a uh, big G tackle here. But there was others just squandered. Yeah. Do what? You're gonna get you a check though. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get more than just a check too. Because 1414 was the cut line and I had 136 yesterday. Which today is gonna bring me to an average of like six almost 16 a day. So I'm gonna make more than a check, I'm gonna make the top 25. Yeah, that'd be good. Which is where four thousand dollars starts. More than a check, a good check. Got one. Got one. Knit. Oh. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh my gosh. That's one you need, sir. Heck yeah. That's my that's my biggest fish. That's like a four and a half pounder. I'm close to twenty now.
And that last bite was so cool because he was right up on it and then I just felt to go boom. That went. We're gonna leave in a minute now. Screw it. Welcome everybody to our 2022 Major League Fishing Toyota Series presented by ARE. It's our championship event. It is cut day. It is payday. We had 194 pros, 194 co-anglers started this event yesterday morning at 7 o'clock. Today is day two. We will cut the field after today's way into our top 10 pros and co-anglers. We'll start our way in right here tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. Before we get our day two. Cole Breeden, Lebanon, Missouri Pro, 17 and a half pounds on day one. To jump into that top 10, you only need 1310. You're bringing a five bass limit to us here on day two and a good bag of fish. How about 16 pounds even to put you in seventh place? That's absolutely right, pull them out. Sitting in seventh place, is that gonna hold up for a top 10? We're a little over halfway done. Seventh place, Pro. Very consistent weights on day one and on day two. Drew Gill, coming in hot, watch your step. Mount Carmel, Illinois Pro, 13 and, ooh, 13 and a half pounds on day one. Ooh. So we know the Western Pro, Patrick Tui, sitting in 10th place. To jump into the top 10, you need 18 pounds and 13 ounces. It's right there, I've already seen it. It's really close. Looking for 18, 13. I think Drew's gonna get it. Welcome to the top 10. Limited bass, give it to him. 19 pounds and nine ounces. You're sitting in eighth place. You got a couple of spots to play with. Absolutely, bust them out. 19, nine, put a little charge in this way in. It's been a little monotonous. 19.9 on day two, when not a lot of guys that caught him on day one seem to struggle here on day two, Mr. Gill was able to capture a good limit of SES. Yeah. After setting myself up to have to have an absolute banner day to have a chance to make the top 10 cut for day three on day two, I went out, everything went my way, I made a good adjustment, I switched from fish on bait to fish purely suspending and started catching a lot higher quality and having opportunities at a lot of big bites. And I was able to capitalize on every bite I got on day two, every good bite that I had on day two, I put it in the boat and that was the difference between me making day three and not. And I got the opportunity to get to fish day three of the Toyota Championship by making the top 10 in this event and so did Cole. Cole ended up catching 17 pounds on day one, 16 pounds on day two, and making day three in this event as well. This was the second consecutive day three that me and Cole had made, looking back on Truman, where we were able to do the same thing in that event, and really set ourselves up to have a big opportunity to make a lot of money on day three. You think the cloudy weather will make them bite a reed? Why don't you? I just think there's going to be more floaters. You think there's going to be more? I trust you because you know more about this game than I do. But well, just from what I've seen on Table Rock, yeah, that's okay. Well, the so school, the giant schools, yeah, I see turn into floaters until they group up again. Well, suspending bass are suspending bass, basically everywhere you go. 
It's yeah. usually in a lot deeper water. Yeah. So that's the only difference. But still. I wouldn't think in cloudy weather that that would make them go down to some sort of cover. Like you. It no, no. Cloudy weather logically should make more fish suspend. That's one thing I know they're not going to do. They're not just. I'm not going to leave the suspension mode. Suspension mode. Yes, that's the best description I've ever heard. Suspension mode. They're not going to leave. <laughs> I mean, they're they're there they're there not because the conditions. They're, they're there because they want. Because of the conditions. But they're there because they want to eat. Exactly. Even if they're just floating, they're there because like I watched floaters when they met a school of shad, they pounded them for like thirty seconds and then went back to float. Yeah. I'm gonna catch four pounder today on camera, and somebody's gonna make fun of my big net whenever the show comes out. I am gonna make fun of your big net. <laughs> I swear. You take it and put it Does on your story. Do you know where I'm going from? There's no musky in this lake. <laughs> That's what you like. I got all my swimmers prepared for war. I hope we both whack them today. Me too. Let's go. Bro. He's not one I want, but for now, he's one I'll take. Nope, ever. 
because hey, I'm about to catch another one. I've, I've, I've played around. So be ready. Uh, this one looks decent too. He's not decent to her, but he is a keeper. All right. He went very deep. He's literally the exact same bass. He's got the black lips and everything. Two two-pounders. Not what I want, but the scar card. I'm gonna bust a big old bag again. Cause now that they're, I know they're doing this again, it's over. It's a death one. Because you gotta move it independently. Oh gosh, that's a bad. Sean, be ready. Okay. I think it might be a bad too. Yeah, it is. I told you that was a good one. Let's bring my pounder. I'm going to leave this net right here. Thanks, sir. All right. That's one I can live with. Yeah. I told you he was a good one. I told you. How far back are you? Huh? How far weight back? Weight-wise. Weight-wise. How far back are you? Uh, Six pounds. Six? Yeah. Problem is, or five and three-quarter. But Kyle Hall's fishing this exact same way. So like when he catches them, I'm gonna catch them. And when I don't, I don't catch them, he's not. Secondary deal. My primary deal has been this. I might catch one here. I don't know if it's a bass. It might be though. If it is, it's probably a good one. My mouth will eat whatever, man. Got him. Got him. Number five. It's so quick, I don't have time to the net. I know. That's the magic of it is like usually they bite close to the boat because that's when you get your bait going the fastest and the highest. And so like it yeah, a lot. Like it when it starts moving up the they like when it moves up and fast. Two and a half pounds. I got two and a half pounds. Heck yeah. I've not had five this fast all week. It's a good day for it too. Uh-oh, Sean. The bait's getting a little higher. Is it? Mm -hmm. I don't know how big this one is, but it's good. Gosh, I literally just dropped the rod. Dude, you can saw that. You can throw the rod. Oh, and there's another fish, and it's a lot bigger than this one. Yeah, there's. Well, they're just starting to suspend more. Yeah, be ready. This one's better. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, That's, awesome. That's a call. Yeah.
I think I might have more than 12. I think I'm more than like the 14 and a half. Gotta keep catching them. That's my best fish, dude. Four pounder. That's your smallest two something. Two something. That puts me at like 17 pounds. The shallower they are, the easier they are to get bite. They're just not much. They're just thick. Adios. That's a cool hole. Probably a pound and a half cold. Puts me at 1691 on this deal. I don't, the problem is, all they're going to do is tear up my swing bait because I think they're like two pounds. Got one. I need it. Maybe. Yeah, no. Oh, shit. Ooh. Sorry, man. You're good. Oh, they're better than two pounders. Yeah, that's oh, better than two pounds. That's three pounds. Heck yeah. Oh, Sean. Three pounder. He'll barely cold. You're good. I gotta weigh him up anyways. I'm EK.
Ooh, but not that one. Got him. Sean. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Sean, get ready. Get him in that net. Bam! That's a good one. That is a good one. Ooh, high three. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Ooh, high three. You got him? Yeah, I got him. Thanks, sir. Appreciate the net job. He's right by the boat. He's closer to four than three. Bam. <clears throat> Sean, thank you for the net, man, sir. Let me ask you now, were you looking at your bait or the graph when you bit? I was looking at the graph. Were you? Because I... I wanted to make sure he was breathing on it before hey, I twitched it. It was so close to the boat. I, had I hope you, you got that on camera. Oh, yeah. I had you, the bait, and everything because it was so close to the boat. That blow-up is awesome. That was better than the other I'll one. I'll be honest with you. I was looking over here, and he went douche, and I looked in my viewfinder, and it was all in there. He's throwing that top water. You think? If they get high enough up to eat it, I'm gonna keep doing it. Dude. I got him, I got him. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. That's I a giant. At him. I was just letting him swim in. That's a five pounder. Darn near. Good job. Oh my gosh. Dude. That's the one I needed. That's what we were looking for out here on G-Bill today. Oh, buddy. We have put on a charge. I've been doing this for about 15, 20 years. That may be some of the best top water footage I've ever filmed. <laughs> because he came and got it's twice. So close to the boat, too. Hey, hey, because I was so tight on the bait. Fills up the TV screen from end to end, the bait belly. He came and he missed it, and I stayed tight. I didn't zip out. And when he came again, I could count his. I could see his lateral line. Are That's you how serious? Close I was. Oh boy! <laughs> it was awesome. What did I tell you about that spook, man? If they hey, got a... that, that right there will be the shot of the show. Five pounder on top on Gville, baby. Oh, oh man, that might be the biggest catch in my tournament career. I told you there were some big ones in here. Hmm. Let's go. Gosh. I've been working so hard all year to make this freaking tournament. And I'm so happy that I just decided to come out here and catch it. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, there's a big old school of them.
Ich bin hier so gut. Heck yeah. That'll work. Three and four. Hey Sean. Fish boat. Good job, buddy. <laughs> oh my. I'm not laughing. That's a double. Hey, I, I don't know why, Sean, but I just looked out of the corner of my eye. You must have said something or breathed hard or something. But right before you set the hook, I decided to do this, uh -huh. and then crack! So it's going to be awesome for you too, man. Got the whole, I don't know what, did you, did he hit it and let it go? Uh, no, <laughs> Did you say something? Why did I turn and look? I said I got one. Oh, did you? Okay. And then when you cracked him is when he jumped up. Yeah, I got the orange ones and gray ones. Got that I would love it if you get some fish. I That one might help. What am I saying? Oh, yeah. That's a helper. Sorry, buddy. I had one hand and I had to sleeve halfway in there. You're good, dude. I'll take it. Does he help is the question. Sean, I gotta say, I probably said this before, but best mustache, maybe in bass fishing, definitely in the tournament. Oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Shaw is like kind of, he's got seniority, so. Hey, get this, he's a firefighter. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. It makes so much sense. <laughs> So nine pros trying to run down Kyle Hall. Here we go, our next pro to weigh in. He's had a lot of success at the college level. He's already won a lot of money with Major League Fishing in his very young career. He is from Mount Carmel, Illinois. 13-6 on day one, but 19 pounds, nine ounces on day two. Let's hear it for Drew Gill. All right, Drew, listen, you need just five pounds and 11 ounces. That's what separates you from Kyle Hall. How many do you have in the bag? I got five in the bag. What I'm talking about, let's get it done. Number one, it's a great start for Drew Gill. That one goes three pounds, nine ounces. Number two, another big one. It's got you up to seven, one. 
Number three is a good one. That a guy. Hey, listen, if you got four or five, pull them out together. You're at 11 pounds even. Wow! A five best limit. Take him to the front, Drew. Making television. Drew Gill of Mount Carmel, Illinois. I believe you're already qualified for next year's college championship too, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Had a guy. Drew, a five bass limit on championship Saturday worth. Big bag. 19 pounds and seven ounces. You got the lead. Let's go talk about it, man. 52 pounds six ounces on Lake Gunnersville, three days in the fall. Pretty good week, Drew. Yeah, it's been a pretty good week for me, but the thing is, man, it's been a pretty good week for a lot of people. This lake keeps pumping them out in the last two years. It's been fishing ridiculously good. Absolutely. How'd you catch your fish this week, man? Over 19 pounds, two different days? I caught them all suspending. I caught them, you know, to beat this field, I couldn't do it the way they were all doing it and ended up few of us caught them the same way. We caught them suspending. I caught them on a swim bait and top water. It's fun. What kind of a top water? Frog? I caught them on a big spook. That's fun too, man. We'll talk about, hey, listen, great crowd here. Talk about how the college circuit has prepped you for this Toyota series, man, because it is extremely competitive. Yeah, the college circuit has prepared me to fish on this level really well. I mean, me and Cole both, who's about to weigh in, uh, we both seen a lot of success at the college level. And it allows us to come to a lot of these fisheries. I mean, I've fished college tournaments here, lots of different places all over the country. And it really prepares us to fish at this level. I love it, man. Any final words for a great crowd? I know your dad's here. I spoke with him. Met him earlier. He's proud of you. Anybody watching back in Illinois or anywhere in the Major League Fishing universe? I'd like to thank my family, my friends, everyone that supported me this far. Uh, I'd like to thank, first and foremost, Revelation Machinery. They've, uh, if, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here. I'd also like to thank uh, Fast Bass Marine Precision Sonar and Arc Rods. Love it, man. Hey, I can tell you this. He's good on the stick, too. He's your new leader. Don't go anywhere, man. You're the new king of the hill, Drew. Right here. Until someone knocks you off this stage, Drew Gill is your new leader. Who's next? Good job, buddy. Good job, man. That's pretty cool, man. Your dad's man. That's... I'm on. Promise. All right, our next pro to weigh in is from Lebanon, Missouri. Had 17 pounds, 8 ounces on day one. 16 pounds yesterday. Good enough for eighth place. Another guy's had a ton of success in our college circuit. Let's hear it for Cole Breeden. All right, Cole, good to see you, man. This guy catches them everywhere he goes, all over the country. Our new leader, Drew Gill. Cole, to dethrone him, you need 18 pounds and 14 ounces. Here we go. This guy can catch them. Number one, good start. That one goes 115. Number two, it's a good one. Got you up to 314. Number three, absolutely got you over six pounds. Let's see four or five together. Wow, two good fish on championship Saturday. From Missouri's Cole Breeden. Always catching them. All right, Cole, good job, man. A five bass limit. Worth. Very respectable. 12 pounds, 14 ounces as you in second place. Let's go talk about it. 46 pounds and six ounces in three days. Lake Gunnersville's pretty good, Cole. Yeah, it was a tough week for me overall. Actually, my buddy Drew uh, gave me a little a little hint uh, the last day of practice, a couple bites he got chasing school and fish. And so day one of the tournament, I decided to just go graph around and find them. Uh, third stop that I found some shad, I caught basically all 17 and a half pounds off of it. Uh, ended up finding a couple more spots and just, you know, spent my week rotating those. There's a lot of, lot of big fish hanging around. I just, you know, past two days kind of fell off a little bit and 
didn't have you know the fish that were around me like I should have had but it was still a really fun week and doing what I love to do do it on table rock all the time so it was fun absolutely man you plains guys you college guys gotta stick together hey tell me about the college circuit man you've had a lot of success there how it proved you cold breeding uh traveling around the country fishing lots of different fisheries i'm surprised i've never been to gunnersville it's my first week but you know i've been to basically every lake on the tennessee river florida everywhere and it really uh lets you see a lot of different fisheries and learn a lot and even you know i didn't think i'd be live scoping chad at gunnersville this week but you know, that's, I'm even learning still um, and traveling around. So that really uh, prepared me, taught me lots of different things. Absolutely. Well, you made it to the top 10 championship Saturday. It's your time. Anybody anywhere in the Major League Fishing Universe you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, huge thanks to my parents for all the support. Thanks to my fiance, Haley, and mom. They drove as soon as they heard I got the top 10 last night. Um, thank you to Pro's Choice Marine Modern Outdoor Tackle. Um, all those people helped me out a ton to be able to travel and fish. It is payday for Cole Breeden. Great job this week, man. A top 10 finish at the Toyota Series Championship. And Cole Breeden sits in second place. Seven pros left. Who's next? On day three, I was able to catch the second biggest bag behind Kyle and moved up from ninth to third after being in 63rd after day one and totally changed the outlook of my week. I was more than happy with, this, with the finish that I had. Couldn't have asked for more, especially after the day one that I had. I put myself really far behind the eight ball and just despite having 19 and a half pounds both day two and day three, just wasn't enough to overcome the deficit. Kyle put on a clinic those three days and was just the uncatchable man this week. I would like to thank Revelation Machinery, Arc Rods, Precision Sonar, all my sponsors from last year for supporting me along the way. My Arc Rods that I used in this tournament, I use an Arc Lancer Pro, uh, seven foot six medium heavy fast on my swim bait, and I used an Arc Viper, seven foot three medium heavy uh, moderate, I think it was, for a spook. And these two rods really gave me the ability to, with swim bait, put a lot of heat to these fish, get them to the boat quick, and I had a lot of parabolic action my spook rod, allowing those fish to do a lot of head shakes and not throw the bait with trebles, even when they bit close to the boat, like one that one four pounder you guys saw. Uh, and I'd really like to thank Mark McQuaw and the entire Toyota Series crew for the job they did this season. This was my first year on the Toyota Series and I could not have been happier with the way things were ran. These tournaments were ran smoothly. Everything was, was done well. The MLF crew that was at every one of these events was nothing but cheerful and friendly every single event. Could not have asked for more for my first season on the Toyota Series. And that event gave me the chance to get an invite to the Tackle Warehouse Invitationals this season, which was the biggest break I've had in my career to date. And I couldn't have done it without Mark and the entire Toyota crew, all my sponsors, my family, my friends, my girlfriend, everyone that helped me along the way without practicing with Cole for the last two events of the year. I was really, really fortunate in the 2022 season to make a break in my career. I hope you guys have really enjoyed watching this series. I've really enjoyed putting these videos together and you know, looking back on my 2022 season kind of inspired me to go out and catch them this year. Um, I hope you guys have truly enjoyed the series and I'm looking forward to putting out Okeechobee soon. Thanks guys. <laughs>